Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments. Alamance County is pleased to present the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. December 19th session of the Alamance County Board of Commissioners into order. It is December the 19th, right, Sheriff? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. you had a had an incredulous look on your face. I wanted to make sure. Um, just so everybody can understand what's going on, our our chairman is on uh, either Zoom or a phone call tonight because he's recovering from being under the weather, and our fellow member, Commissioner Turner is on zoom apparently tonight so uh, he's under the weather himself so according to state law they can't participate but they can listen to the meetings and they can't vote but uh, um, can occasionally make a comment but not on anything that's up for a vote tonight so um, we will proceed from here and i'll start out with uh, mr lashley who's going to take over from mr turner with a prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance. Sure, sure. Uh, join me in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for another wonderful day that you have created. And dear Lord, give us the strength and wisdom to take care of the business for the citizens of Alamance County. And dear Lord, thank you for this season that we rejoice in your name. In your name we pray, amen. 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 <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, as to the agenda, we have an item on the agenda, item 7.1. Which will involve discussion from members of the Board of Commissioners. And since we have two of our team out tonight, I've, a note, I've notified the individuals being here, com coming to uh, present to us on that, that we will defer that to the 19th. So I need a motion to that so effect. Moved. So moved. Second. I uh, have a motion and a second. No discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 So the amended agenda takes off item 7 1. Now to the Sheriff's Life Saving Award. Sheriff? treatment after the doses was administered and was last known to be in the custody of the jail. 
It was the recommendation of the Hall River Police Department that both officers receive the life-saving award for their quick actions and attention to the details during the performance of their duties. This is an example, I would say, folks, of two of our agencies in Alamance County working well together, which is what we want them to do, and which what which we've always seen them do, I believe. So thank you very much for living that life. We've had two officers. We had one, um, Luke Savage, who uh, assisted on removing someone from a burning house. He and a pink rest rushed in. So we've got some wonderful police officers. And we appreciate the mayor for working relationship with the Hall River Police Department and Chief Harrison. We go a long way back. <laughs> Very well said, Chair. <laughs> so, so at this time, I'd like to present commendation life saving award for Sergeant Jackson Brinkley for, prefer, for performing the life saving act on November 3rd, 2022, and providing CPR and providing life saving uh, care. Congratulations, Sergeant Franklin. Thanks, 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 Sergeant. And your life saving team. Thank you. I would also <laughs> like <laughs> to present the life saving award to my deputy, John T. Ray. It reads in recognition of your actions that resulted in life saved on November 3rd, 2022. Thank you for your service. And Deputy Ray, sure. I am honored to have you work for me. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Life saving award. Thank you. Yes, sir. Congratulations. Thanks. Thanks. Um, Steve, while you're sitting down before you get there, I would just like to bring attention to how important it is that our first responders and law enforcement, everything like that, that is in the face of every kind of danger you can imagine, countywide has been trained with Narcan and all kind of other EMS qualities, so to speak, to bring people back. And we recently saw in the news where a female officer had gotten some um, fentanyl on her face and it took three times of Narcanning by her fellow officers to bring her back. It is a very dangerous position for a professional that goes out that may face something like this. And I just want us all to realize how professional they are, but at the same time, how many deaths we would have in Alamance County and across this country if we didn't have Narcan. So it's a great tool to save lives, but sometimes those that are, have drug problems know that and they use it in all the wrong ways. So um, always know how much we appreciate you putting yourself in danger to save another life that sometimes is really struggling with a real evil in theirs. So thank you all. Thank you. Okay, uh, on to public comments. Well, we... Did you go? Yeah, we're we'll on to public comments here. Um, agenda? I think we have to approve the agenda. Did we not? I thought we did. Okay. Motion to approve the agenda? Someone. I'll second. We're going to get through a lot of this tonight. <laughs> Let's take time. I don't want Roberts, you to be in first all the time. We're going to be learning the Roberts Rule of Order. That's right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Passes unanimously. Okay. Um, now, public comments. We have uh, quite a few for one item and one for a general comment tonight. Uh, I'm seeing six on from Living Free Ministries. Uh, typically, we allow three comments on one topic, and uh, you can uh, you can identify one person to represent all three of those, or you can have the three, and then we um, and you're limited as a three. You're limited to three minutes. Our public comments period is three minutes each for the speakers. So. Uh, Commissioner Carter, the policy um, as approved by the board has been updated, so uh, groups are certainly, it's recommended that they have one person speak on account of everyone, but they are not constricted to three people, although all individual speakers must abide by the three minute limit. Right. So, uh, mm -hmm. on the, Henry, is your, your topic on the agenda or off the agenda? Off, off the agenda. Okay. So we'll just take them in order of uh, 
the way they're listed here then, Jackie Fortner. Good evening, Commissioners. My name is Jackie Fortner and I'm from Snow Camp, North Carolina. I'm here to talk about Living Free Ministries. Folks, they, over my 41 years of experience in law enforcement, I've seen a group come forward that was able to help people. And through my work with the Sheriff's Office, I've seen several that was in detention that we were able to get into Living Free Ministries and now they're productive citizens of this county and they hold jobs. And I understand that there is some money uh, that's given to the government through the opiate money. And these folks are just asking for a small fraction to help build some more buildings, some more spaces, so that we can save more people. I also know that these people work on the mind, work on the heart, and they work on the soul. And you know, that's better than trading drugs trading one drug for another one. And when they put these people back out on the street, they find them jobs, they get them to working and being productive citizens of Alamance County. And is that not what we wanted? And before we've had anything else, these people were in the shadows doing the work. These people right here were the ones on the front line helping these people and getting them where they need to be today. And I'd just like to take the few minutes to just say thank you for what y'all do. You got hard decisions. And sometimes they're good and sometimes they're bad, but we all got to live with what we do. And I just appreciate and thank you for the time. And I wish y'all a Merry Christmas. Thank you. Okay, Henry Vines. Good evening, Commissioners. My name is Henry Vines and I live at 3450 Eyes of the Drive. Tonight I just stand before you and I uh, just wanted to thank each and every one of y'all for all the time and effort that y'all put in. I don't think the average citizen in this county realizes how much time each one of y'all put in. And I can assure you that the compensation that y'all get doesn't hardly probably cover your gas money. So I just wanted to tell you tonight that I appreciate your service. I appreciate what each and every one of you do. I appreciate you taking my phone calls through the year, although we might not always agree, <laughs> but uh, you do listen to me, and I appreciate that. And I, John and Craig, y'all out there, y'all same. I hope that uh, y'all have a speedy recovery and uh, be able to get to be with your families. And I'd like to also wish each and every one of you a Merry Christmas. i also like to take time to thank this staff and everybody that's here for all the work that they do. Uh, I work with a lot of them uh, through the Board of Equalization, and we have some really good people here in this county uh, that helps keep this county running. Yeah. I know y'all had some tough decisions this year, and there's going to be some tough ones next year, and I hope God will be with you and help you guide you in direction and lead to what we need for the county. And again, thank you for the time that you give us each time we want to say something. and. Again, wish each and every one of you a Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you. Merry Christmas, Vines. Thank you, Henry. Is that Craig? Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. He, sounds, he don't sound good. Mm. Um, the rest of the rest of the comments are from Living Free Ministries. I don't know if you have one person specifically that you'd like to speak more than another. Uh, the next one is Christy Doss. Can I let Jay go first? Sure. Okay. Jay Doss. That's what I was getting ready to ask. All right. All right. I'm going to read kind of fast because I'm borderline. But good evening and thank you for <laughs> allowing us the opportunity to share that. tonight. Uh, I'm Jay Doss and I reside in Snow Camp and I'm the co founder and the executive director of Living Free Ministries in Snow Camp. Living Free currently provides free residential long-term recovery programs for men and women. I'm here in support of and to share our desire to partner with the various organizations in our county by providing recovery programs and assistance to the individuals and families whose lives have been devastated by the current opioid epidemic that we are facing. 
As you are aware, Alamance County has been awarded funding of over $8 million to be distributed over the next 16 years as a settlement from the pharmaceutical companies and distribution facilities responsible for the misuse of opiates and with more settlements to come. Also, you are aware that this funding is to be used for the remediation of the opioid fallout and the crisis according to the North Carolina Mem Memorandum of Agreements that has been set forth. The mem memorandums identified four areas of focus and one of those areas being organizations providing wraparound recovery services for those battling and seeking recovery from opiate addictions. We would simply like, love an opportunity for a place at the table as you diligently and sincerely seek the most effective means to steward this funding to help as many people as we can by providing programs and assistance for those who have experienced this devastation. We have 12 years of success and positive relationships working with our local county organizations and authorities. We provided recovery services, housing opportunities, vocational training and job opportunities, as well as biblical one-on-one -on -one counseling to numerous residents from our county legal system, such as pretrial release arrangements, probation stipulations, bond deferments, case management for DSS cases, along with applicants independently seeking non-medically assisted recovery programs. Notably, I would like to provide clarification on a potential misunderstanding that seems to exist. Living Free is a 501c3 nonprofit, in fact. But according to the state MOAs, nonprofits are eligible for receipt of opioid settlement funds on the basis of the services that they offer. Living Free services are consistent with the services provided in the recovery guidelines stated in the MOAs established to govern the distribution of these funds on a county level. Living Free has maintained operational expenses and considerable growth over the last 12 years. In 2019, we expanded by starting Mary's House, a facility to help women with addictions and other life controlling issues. We have done so without requesting or receiving funding from our county and are confident that we can continue to do so in the future. However, with the settlement money available, we have a comprehensive plan to build a 14 bed home to provide services for mothers with children and pregnant moms seeking help and recovery services for addiction. I have a proposal that we'd like to leave you guys if you're willing to receive that. Um, and, with the county manager. and we are con we are confident that with this expansion we could see many more success stories and children reunified with their mothers. If you would please consider us for this opportunity uh, to partner with you in future planning and consideration for funding available to organizations like Living Free through these settlements. We would appreciate it. Thank you for your time and consideration. Merry Thank Christmas. You. Thank you, Jay. Merry Christmas to you. Okay, Christy, do you want to go down? My name is Christy Doss, 1231 at Grove Lane in Snow Camp. I wanted to share my heart with regards to the crisis in our county with addiction. As I was preparing to come to this meeting tonight, many things crossed my mind and questions of why am I so passionate about what I'm giving my life to. The answer for me is both personal and evidence-based. My son and my husband are both overcomers of addiction. But unfortunately, I lost my brother and my father way too soon to the devastation of addiction. And for my brother and father, medically assisted options did not work. I think that we can all agree that we have a major crisis in our county. We are losing lives way too frequently. This week I was invited to a funeral and I would much rather be invited to collaborative efforts in our county than to be invited to funerals. This summer I was made aware of the National Opioid Settlement by conversations with Janet Warp Black and her firm. Janet connected me with a man named Robin Hayes and Robin has given countless hours and discussions with legislature about the importance of including faith-based recovery nonprofits in the consideration of the disbursement of the opioid funding. When I was made aware of the funding, I was pretty ex excited to be honest. As Jay stated, we don't need this funding to consider to continue to operate we're sustainable but we could use the funding to expand and Jay mentioned expanding by the 14 beds I don't know if any of you have seen this elements choosing hope which was done by impact elements in the Harwood group but the one thing that they discovered after roundtables discussions all across the county is that our county is greatly divided and in the area of opio the opioid crisis we cannot afford to be divided lives are at stake people are dying every day 
And so really my heart is just to ask you guys to consider us as discussions happen all across the county with the opioid crisis. We are a viable option. Just because we are faith-based doesn't mean that we are not a viable option for these discussions. We are evidence-based. Our statistic is 81% success in people walking out long-term sobriety. 81%. But the truth is, I wish I could stand up here and rave about all the success, right? The other flip side of this is that people die and that people that have come to our programs have died that that is the truth but but we can do something right and we want to be a part of these discussions and we are asking you guys to consider us as a funding opportunity for the opioid settlement funds and so that's really my heart um man i have 36 seconds that i would really love to use um but anyway I, I just, it's personal for me. And the funds, I just want to say this, it's not going to get me any more um, salary. Um, it's not. It's going to get me a lot more work hours, but this is what I've given my life to. This is what I've given my life to. These officers just shared stories of using the Narcan, right, to save a life. This happens every day, as I'm sure your law enforcement officers could share. And there are options, and faith-based options work. So thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I don't see any other topics on the public speaking. That's our three for that, so. Commissioner Carter, all speakers who have signed up, although they are encouraged to um, have one person speak for them, all individuals who have signed up to speak may speak for three minutes under the public comment and public hearing policy as approved by the Alameda County Board of Commissioners. Okay. Then... Eric McPherson. Thank y'all for letting us come up here tonight. Mm -hmm. um, I'm Eric McPherson, 7329 Bill Road, Snow Camp. Um, as a small business owner and a citizen of Snow Camp my whole life, I have seen their program work. Jay and Christie's program has taken people from the bottom of their life and brought them back and their, their program works and there's there's nothing out there that's that's better than what they do bringing people back spiritually mentally it, it it's a great great program and their program works there's an old saying you can lead a horse to water but you can't make him drink they lead them to water and they make them drink and it's <laughs> it's a good program thank, thank you, you. Brian Biggers. You look familiar. Imagine, imagine, imagine. <laughs> Thank you so much. Brian Biggers, Jones Lane, last house in Alamance County. Uh, I want to make, I'm for living, but just want to make one quick point. Having been in addiction as a young man, worked 40 years now in addiction recovery ministries. I want you to consider when we look at the funding or whatnot, let's look at the common sense success rate. 80% uh, is unheard of nationwide for the success rate. The 30% is good nationally. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we don't want to do here is we don't want to disperse funds so we can feel like we've helped somebody. Because the goal is not for us to feel good. The goal is to help as many people as possible. So I would encourage you in the consideration of where all this goes, let's look at where we can do the best for the most people. And, of course, our goal is to get people back to their kids, back in their homes again, back, their lives back in order over the long term, over the years. And living free is the best we've ever dealt with to do that. <clears throat> Everybody else is going to say everything else. God bless you and Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Tara Lemonian. Am I killing that last name? No, you got it. <laughs> Hi, my name is Tara Lemonian. Um, I reside at 133 Graves Road in Graham. Um, I just want to share on Living Free. I am one of their success stories. Um, I graduated the program back in June of this year. Um, but before I went into the program, I was in addiction and I lost my daughter to um, DSS custody and she went into foster care. 
Um, shortly after that, I overdo- overdosed the day after Thanksgiving of last year. And after that, I found Living Free, and I started the program on December 7th of 2021. Um, during my time there, uh, I fought really hard to get my daughter back. Um, however, due to the fact that they weren't able to allow me to have her with me in the program, um, I had to make a decision for her. Uh, instead of keeping her in the system longer, she needed now. So I uh, relinquished my rights, uh, my parental rights, in April. And she was adopted 17 days ago after 812 days in the system. However, um, this recovery story has been amazing. I still have a relationship with the foster parents, and I get to see her. And I restored my uh, relationship with my two boys who live with my mom. So I just want to say that, you know, if this funding is available and can be granted to Living Free and they can expand and allow moms to come in with their children, it would be a great opportunity to reunite families. That's all. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all for coming to us tonight to speak. Do I have a motion on the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, that's unanimous. Okay. Now, um, have a public hearing and resolution for ARMC Cone Health. Nick Wilkinson will come forward and uh, Cone Health Assistant Director for Government Affairs. Good evening, Commissioners. Thank you, Vice Chairman. Uh, my name is Nick Wilkinson. Didn't I meet you in Greensboro? Yes, ma'am. I thought that was you. Yes, ma'am. Great to and see yes, you again. Good to see you again. Likewise. Uh, my name is Nick Wilkinson with Cone Health, uh, based out of Greensboro. Uh, first and foremost, thank you for assisting us with the public hearing portion of this this evening, um, and then certainly look forward to your support for item number two, which is just the um, adoption of the resolution. Uh, this, as I mentioned to you all last week, you all received an email from me. This is just a procedural item that we have to go through in order to refinance our bonds that we currently have. Um, as noted in your item agenda, um, this goes for the bonds that were taken out for both ARMC and Med Center Mebbin right down the road. So all this is doing is allowing us to take this opportunity to refinance the bonds. And partial or part of that is we have to hold public hearings in each of the counties in which case in which the properties are sitting, which is why we are here tonight. Um, again, important to note for the taxpayers, this is no financial burden on the county, not on the taxpayers. This is solely Cone Health's bonds that we are currently in the process of repaying. So if you have any questions, I'm here to answer those. But ultimately, thank you for your support and your participation in this process. Look, yes, and you're welcome to Guilford County Diversion Center at any point, Sheriff, you and your team. I know you all just broke ground on your center here. We look forward to working with you all in that process as well. But any time that we can ever be as of any assistance to you all, you're more than welcome to come over and happy to meet with you all at any time. Thank you. Thank you. I do, have, I do have one question. Yes, sir. And it's pretty it's pretty mundane because you've already answered it, that the Alamance County taxpayers that have they don't, they don't have any we're not on the hook, so to speak. Correct. This has nothing to do with the taxpayer. I know we hear the word bond and we think it's going sure. on a ballot, it's a referendum. That is not the case. This is solely Cone Health refinancing the bond that we are already engaged in and already paying back on. This just gives us a better rate as we continue to pay this bond off. Well, okay. that narrows down my question quite a bit. Uh, does uh, does Alamance does Alamance County have have any investment interest whatsoever in Cone Health? I don't believe so, no. The reason I asked that question is because Cone Health is a, um, we used to be, we used to have a used to call it county hospital. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to make sure that, you know, that everything, what we're saying is like everything as far as the county is concerned, we don't own stock in this company. We don't own any debt in this company. That's correct. Yes. Yeah. So we are, Cone Health in general is a nonprofit that's based out of Greensboro. We purchased Alamance Regional a number of years ago and folded that into the Cone Health system. So it is licensed under Cone Health. It is completely our entity for ARMC and Med Center. Well, well good luck with the bonds. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. It's going to be an interesting time for you. Oh, yes. <laughs> and that purchase kind of gave us Impact Alamance. That's correct. Right. And correct. a tremendous blessing. That's 
Well, just works good for everybody. Like <laughs> Excellent. Anytime. <laughs> Anytime. Uh, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Okay. <laughs> Commissioner Carter, we need to hold the public hearing before we have any Oh, that's right. <laughs> Oh, that, this is a public hearing. It's a public hearing. So <laughs> open the public hearing. Well, let me ask you a quick question. Just because, I mean, well, let's, I'm, let's enter into it. Just one, one quick question. Yes, sir. Uh, just because uh, I have a lot of people who called me about this mm -hmm. particular item. And I'm just curious, why is it that you, as your organization, is, is coming to Alamance County Commissioners to, uh, for a public hearing when we don't really have any vested interest in it? Sure. So the process is the bond that we have currently are under right now is financed through the Public Finance Authority or PFA, which is run through the state of Wisconsin. And so in order to meet their requirements to go through that funding process, we have to hold a public hearing in every county that we have a piece of property that benefited from that bond. Gotcha. And so as I mentioned earlier, we did, and it's noted in, in your agenda item, but we took out a total of 88 million dollars for Alamance County specifically and that does everything from purchasing land for the hospital to upfitting ARMC um, re-expanding and expanding and re-equipping the emergency department uh, updating surgery centers uh, relocating and upfitting the new cancer center so a variety of projects were financed under this current bond who is their banker no doubt <laughs> a long we time really ago. We really appreciate you guys. Reagan, are we close? Um, you may move <clears throat> forward with opening the public hearing. Just as a reminder, the commissioners should wait um, to comment on any of anything that you have to say until after the public hearing is closed. So do we have a motion to enter the public hearing? So move for the public hearing. Second. And what you I read was sufficient, am I okay. correct? <laughs> yes. Yes, okay. Thank you, Reagan. All in favor, say aye. Aye. We're now into a public hearing. Okay. Just like that. Okay. We've heard a pre had our presentation. Do we have any comments from the left side of the audience? My left. <laughs> You're right. Seeing none, do we have any comments from the right side? My right, your left side of the audience. Mr. Bynes. I just got one question for this gentleman. Y'all can ask him. Um, with all these bonds that's been issued and everything, you know, we've heard about hospitals going under because they're getting so far in debt and all of this. Uh, can you please explain to us how you feel like that you're going to have the financial means to replay this bond and that our hospital won't get closed down like so many has across the country and even in the state? Nick Wilkinson again, Cone Health, happy to answer that and, and thank you for the question. So we are already committed to repaying the bond. This just gives us a greater rate when we refinance it. Um, so that's really the technical part of this. Um, you are 100% correct that hospitals across the country since the pandemic have faced a detrimental um, financial outlook. Um, you know, North Carolina is, is not different. That's across the country. Um, not many hospitals these days are, are making profits. But I can assure you on behalf of Cone Health, we're committed to the community. Not only are we continuing with Alamance Regional, but we're also, you know, continuing to expand services. You can see that there's construction on there. Um, you know, we're, we're here for the community. Um, we've been here for a number of years. Cone Health is extremely stable um, and extremely committed both in Alamance County, but also Rockingham County. Yeah. I mean, we are we are the Triads Health Health Service, so we are committed to that and committed to the community here. Any other any other comments or questions? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. I'll make it. <laughs> so a uh, second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, we're now at public public hearing. Um, I'll have to entertain a motion to approve the resolution. Go ahead. So moved. I'll second. All in favor, say aye. 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 It is approved unanimously. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, commissioners. I appreciate it. Nice Merry Christmas. Nice. I'll talk to y'all soon. Uh, Reagan, uh, everything okay? <coughs> yes. Okay. Um, and 
just to clarify, um, Commissioner Carter, can you read the title of the resolution that you all just voted to? <coughs> it is in your agenda packet. Uh, public hearing and resolution for our ARMC Cone Health. Okay, it's not on my copy. Let's see. You can see. Not the entire no, resolution, the, please just the title of it so we can clear back with the minutes. Resolution of the Board of Commissioners of the County of Alamance, North Carolina, approving the issuance of the public finance authority of its health care system re revenue refunding bonds in one or more series in an aggregate principal amount not to exceed $450 million. Time for the county manager. So the next item I think is going to be the Board of Elections renovation and Sherry Hook is presenting that one. Okay. Good evening, Commissioners. Good evening. Um, I'm here tonight to discuss the renovation of the bank building for use by Board of Elections. This is the property located at 1128 South Main Street, Graham. It was purchased by the county earlier this year. We've been working with R&D architects for the past several months, and they have completed the construction documents for the renovation. They completed those in November. The renovation project was put out for bid and advertised on November 10th in the Alamance News and posted on the county website. We had a mandatory pre-bid meeting on November 18th. We had eight companies show for that. Seven companies submitted bids on this project. Um, on December 12th, last week, the bid opening was conducted and the selected contractor, based on lowest responsive responsible bid, was uh, HM Kern Corporation with a bid of 730,000. <coughs> This project was budgeted in the capital project plan uh, as a CIP uh, project at $850,000. We'd like to put $109,500,000 aside for contingencies. That would be 15% of the budget, um, which would bring the project budget up to $839,500, just below the $850,000 that was budgeted. So tonight, I'm asking for three things to be approved. Number one, um, approval of the proposed selection of HM Kern Corporation as the um, company that would do the renovation project. Allow the county manager to enter into a contract for construction services at $730,000 and budget $839,500 from the county building capital reserve fund, moving it to renovation repair project fund. So I, that was a lot. One question, was there any Alamance County contractors, bids from, was there anybody from our county that did this? That is a good question. I did not bring the list of the okay. seven with me. Okay. I'm sorry. All right. We have um, dealt with um, this company before, H.M. Kern. They were actually the ones that did the renovation on the historic courthouse. Where are they from? I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I should have brought the bid sheet did with I me. Did I Charlotte on I, that? I, I think so. I think so. I read Charlotte in, the, in our Did they give you any idea about what kind of time we're looking at? So we, we're here tonight because we're trying to push this through pretty quickly. We would like, and when we put this out to bid, we said that we would like for this to be done by August 1st. That's very ambitious, extremely ambitious. So they understand <coughs> that's what the timeline is, but with the way that materials are running right now, nobody's going to be able to guarantee that. It's doable if they can get everything in on time. So we're paying more to Do fix it up than we pay for Any other questions? Okay. Do we have a motion to approve? Uh, so moved. 
Pam. Pam. They're out of Greensboro. Okay, Greensboro. thank you. Thank okay. you. I'll, I'll, um, I'll second. Motion to approve in a second. All in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. I think we're looking at a calendar. Item. Yes. Good evening, commissioners. This is somewhat of a housekeeping item, although it looks a little bit different than what you might have seen previously. So I'll walk through a few of the highlights for you. This is just a, a budget calendar that we have developed for the board to adopt tonight. It outlines a schedule and a timing for the budget process. Some of the highlights I wanted to mention are uh, a potential or a proposed uh, board retreat for January 30th and we've got that on there we would like to then introduce the capital improvement plan request process with our departments we would like to start that process in january so a little earlier uh, than you may have seen in the past and like you're uh, typically accustomed to presentation of the recommended budget would be at your may 15th board meeting you are required to hear to hold a public hearing on the budget which would be scheduled for june 5th with the adoption of your fiscal year 23-24 annual budget scheduled for June 19th. The dates outlined are subject to change. We may need to revise those as we go along. So this is just to help facilitate an organized process uh, for staff and for the Board of Commissioners. Are there any questions that we can answer for you? Okay. We'd be asking for adoption of the fiscal year 23-24 calendar. I just have a question. Sure. When we're looking at this budget stuff, because we all know um, the elephant in the room is about the shortnesses of staff across all kind of agencies. Yeah. Um, I received an article about, and you did too, from David Carter about juvenile justice. The juvenile mm -hmm. counselors are in the same boat as DSS, as law enforcement, as everybody. Um, when we look at this budget and say the miracle of all miracles happens that everybody wants to go back into really public service and first responders and all that because it is one of the most amazing things you can do we have to have them all no matter what um, are we going to include that kind of look with that kind of money if we're like way above what we are now because we do these lap salaries and all this and that's just so convenient but we're still short mm -hmm. we may pay people more but we're still short and that's dangerous in this work that we see these folks do I mean this is the front lines of everything we wouldn't go into a war paying soldiers more money and they're half staff so to speak so I'm just curious are we going to look at that to see what kind of real budget we're talking about if we get our agency staffed the way they should be to be really healthy we will be looking at all of that moving forward okay when we approve a budget, we have, I presume we approve it at full staff, right? Yes, that's what we're doing. fully staffed. That's where we get the lap salaries from. So yeah. we're assuming that we get it fully staffed. So. Sure. Lap salaries are real convenient, but that that's not on the force, so to speak. Sure. And um, we, something's got to give with that because um, it's everywhere. We see um, there's been over 20 suicides in our border control at the southern border. We see suicides and everything. It's just not veterans anymore. It's law enforcement. It's everything. And, um, you know, we got to support these folks because they're always there for us no matter what. They are our 911. Everybody gets ticked, but dial 911 and they can't get there fast enough. So um, I told somebody today, I was talking to them, I said, what if we just closed DSS, Parks and Recs, law enforcement, plant, just closed everything for one week, health department, just see how that works to see what we really have in these people. Talking about ticked off. Um, I'm just saying they're priceless. They are priceless, and we need to be so grateful. Sure. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We have a motion to approve. I'll make it. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Unanimous. Okay. County Attorney's Report. No update from the County Attorney's Office. Thank you. Thank you. County Manager's Report. I just wanted to let the board know that staff is looking at, and I'm sorry if I'm echoing, staff is looking at revising um, the language in the UDO uh, as it relates to RVs. It's section 6.14, 
I know a few of you have received some complaints about the enforcement of some of those regulations. So once we started doing some analysis on it, we thought that we could probably revise that. So we will be staying the enforcement of that piece uh, as we work on that, and we'll be bringing some revised language before the board for you to consider um, at a future date. Okay. Thanks. That's all I had. Commissioner's comments? Well, I'll go first because I'm so shy. Um, <laughs> I want to say this, and I mean this. So I've been on this board two years, and my legacy is going to be trash. We all know that. I'll be long gone and it'll be a trash bag on my tombstone because it, that's the, I seem to get those calls. And I got that guy right over at the health department. Is like, you know, here we go together. When, my, when his phone rings and it's me, it probably says she devil. But that's okay. But um, I really am... I, I get these calls all the time and I go to these calls and it's unbelievable what I see. Hoarding is a disease. It's a heroin, it's an alcohol, it's a disease, it's an addiction. And when it gets to the point of what I see and what neighbors have been screaming for, these folks can't do this themselves. An outside party has to come in and it's very expensive. But we cannot have these rules in stone that say this and we're always trying to catch up. We have got to enforce these rules. And I mean, I know that sounds really petty, but it degrades somebody's house worth if they want to sell their house and they live beside this. Mm -hmm. There's rats, there's all kind of stuff, there's sewage, there's everything. And we have got to be, we got to get a ninja trash department. We're going to have to do that because this is ridiculous. Um, I, I just I dread calling Tony every time because it's one of the things where he's got so many more important things to do. But this is important as well if you live beside this. So um, I just really want us to get to where we, we mean business about this. Because if you break the law, you break the law. And this is breaking the law. And we don't need to have ordinances if we are not going to honor them and expect to have them. Because we are putting people at risk and, um, you know, when. When you're in trash so deep that you know a, mou a mouse, mouse is looking at you like your lunch, that's absurd. <laughs> it just really is. And um, I, we're not gonna have kids afraid to play in their yard because the mice are big as rabbits. And I've seen videos. And so I mean this. I, I'm gonna get on a broom about this trash, and because uh, it has got to be done. Because um, I know it affects all kind of departments in this county but we have got to really work hard on this and whatever our county is composed of Alamance County it goes for all of us because we're supposed to all follow the same rules and I just really want that said because it's um it's just out of control and done that's it box thank you that's the last trash <laughs> uh, thank you Steve um, I'm gonna be sh very short and sweet since we uh, quickest meeting all year right <laughs> last one of the year I just want to first of all just thank the staff and, and everyone in the county for all your hard work this year uh, we really do appreciate it and uh, just want to thank Heidi welcome to your six month time frame and thank you you've done a great job so far and we really appreciate, do appreciate it. it and I just want to uh, thank everyone here tonight for showing up and uh, you know making your voice heard it's very important and we really appreciate you coming tonight and the last thing I have to say is this Merry Christmas. Hope Santa Claus is good to everyone. Thank you. I'd like to say ditto to what Mr. Lashley just said. I want to thank uh, our two missing commissioners tonight, Mr. Tur uh, Commissioner Turner and Commissioner La uh, Paisley. Um, they're missed. Uh, John, I want you to be paying attention to the clock because when we hit the gavel tonight, it's going to be 49 minutes probably. But uh, that's a challenge, bro. <coughs> um, folks, I've uh, been on this board now for almost, well, I'm starting my fifth year. And uh, it's been a pleasure. I've enjoyed it. It's a lot of fun. We've got a good crew here. You have a wonderful staff to administer the business of the county. Uh, they, they care about what happens to our citizens. Uh, every single agency, I believe, is deep in their hearts to take care of the people of Alamance County and so they deserve our thanks and they deserve our respect from the top down and uh, I want to say Merry Christmas to them all I enjoyed the uh, uh, service rewards service awards this morning and the 
uh, Christmas lunch last week, and uh, it was a lot of fun. I could not believe how many of our employees showed up. I, you know, you don't realize how many people we employ until you try to see most of them in one room at one time. It's amazing. It was amazing. But thanks so very much, and uh, Merry Christmas to everybody who's here tonight and everybody who's watching. And I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Yes, Steve. Anything? Steve. Yes, Mr. Can, can I uh, can I offer a comment? I've, I've been biting my lip all night. Okay, you getting no. ready to you were getting ready to wipe me out of my forty nine minutes, buddy. Uh, I'm going to get you in under the wire. I just wanted to echo Commissioner Lasley and uh, Commissioner Carter's comments and thank the staff for a great year, particularly in a year of uh, significant leadership change. And uh, just wanted to say Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you and yours. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Paisley? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I guess he's not there. Okay, now I'll entertain a, a motion to adjourn. So Second. We are adjourned. Thank you for watching the Alamance County Commissioners Meeting. Commissioner meetings typically occur on the first and third Monday of each month in the Commissioner's Chambers at the County Office Building at 124 West Elm Street in Graham. The first Monday meeting begins at 9.30 a.m. and the third Monday meeting begins at 6.30 p.m. Changes to the meeting schedule will be posted on the county website at www.alamance-nc.com. The video of this meeting will be broadcast on LocalGov TV. Please go to www.localgov.tv tvnc.com for more information about their schedule and to see more videos produced by your local governments. You can also access this meeting through our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash Alamance County NC or by clicking the YouTube link on the county website. Technical questions regarding this meeting's broadcast or production may be sent to our county webmaster at webmaster at alamance-nc.com. This address is for technical questions only. Comments and questions about the content of this meeting may be made to the commissioners themselves. You can find their contact information at the Alamance County website at www.alamance-nc.com. There, you can click on the link that says County Commissioners to learn more about the commissioners, read minutes and agendas of commissioner meetings, and find other information about the county commissioners. You can also send mail correspondence to County Commissioners, 124 West Elm Street, Graham, North Carolina, 27253. Again, thank you for tuning in to the Alamance County Commissioners Meeting. Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments.